Welcome to another tip of the week. I've got Josh Ackman here from Tech Support Services again. Um, so this week I've asked Josh to kind of help us walk through the advanced blade touch off for machine. Um, Josh can talk a little bit more about this, but ultimately this is helping you get the most accurate miters out of your machine. So Josh, if you could kind of walk us through the process of how we get that advanced blade touch off, and maybe we'll talk a little bit as far as what benefits it is for the customer. Yeah, Nate. Um, so to do a advanced blade touch off, like Nate mentioned, this will help you a lot with your miter cuts. Um, probably one of the first things you want to do if your miter cuts are off. We'll take this shroud off here. I will give you a hand here. I'm assuming we do not want to drop these down into the water tank. No, you do not. Um, other, if you do, they probably will be gone forever here. <laughs> so we're going to start by removing the blade. And I'm assuming these are the wrenches that do come with the machine, is that? These two wrenches do. Okay. So we want to make sure we get the proper Allen wrench in there. Make sure you do have the proper one because we do not want to strip them center arbor, the um, Allen wrench in the center of the arbor out there. And we'll just give this a little tap with a rubber mallet here and we'll spin our brass nut off. If you do have a Voyager, you want to make sure you loosen the, uh, the Allen heads that tighten that brass nut up. It is a five millimeter Allen wrench you'll need. Slide our flange off and this is a pretty tight tolerance there so they can bind up if it's not coming off perfectly straight. I can remove this. So this just pulls out of here. Is it magnet? Yep. On the on this Sabre jet, it is a, just a magnet that holds that water flange on. And we want to take our 15 inch diameter jig here that the machine came with. We will slide our brass ring off. We're just going to slide our jig on until it touches the back flange and it looks like you're being pretty careful there i'm assuming those are some some precision components that we don't want to scratch scar or that is be correct. gentle with you don't want to get too aggressive on it sometimes you'll have to use your palm and tap them on if it's if it starts sliding on a little bit crooked it'll bind up um, or try and pull it back off and straighten that out we do not want to use any hammers or steel mallets on it at all. We're going to just snug this up so it's holding that aluminum jig. And we just want to make sure that that aluminum, it just needs to be slightly snug. We want to make sure that aluminum jig is sitting tight in there. Once we do that, we're going to grab our pendant. We're going to find a nice spot on our table and we're going to come down on that. You don't want anything that's too cut up um, or your backer board's bad or anything like that. And if Nate, if you want to just swing this, we want to just touch it off onto the tabletop here. I'm utilizing Oop. the slow button. Okay, so right pendant. there I felt a little bit of friction. Um, I don't know if you want it tight or just scraping. Just scraping. I'm going to come up a little bit then. Yep. That feels like it's pretty free. Um, I would say maybe a hair down. Right there feels like I can feel just a light, slight bit of friction between the jig and the table. Make sure when you're doing that, utilize your slow button on your pendant. And then we can come over, once you have that touching off, we can come over to the screen here. And we're going to go to our advanced setup screen here. 
and we're going to go to work and table offsets. Now you can see we have our X, Y, and Z here. I want to make sure we have 15 inches in there. That's our 15 inch aluminum jig. And all we have to do is capture Z, confirm, and then you can see our Z value change and your system will turn off once it captures that. That is normal for the system to turn off. Once we have that done, we can turn our system back on. And now let's put everything back on here. I'm gonna raise our Z axis up until I know that I can have enough room for the blade to come on, slide on. We'll spin our brass nut off. Remembering that brass nut is reverse threads. We're gonna take our flange off in here. I got it a little bit tweaked. Looks like a very snug, tight fit. It is, yes. Again, I can see you being very gentle with that, not forcing it. We'll slide our brass ring on first. Make sure that's tight to the back. Put our blade on our brass ring and put our front flange back on. Make sure you hear that front flange seat up against there. You do not want to use your brass nut to push the flange on. Um, you more than likely will end up wrecking your brass nut then. Hand seat that. Making sure our Allen wrench is seated in there all the way. And then we're just gonna give it a couple taps to make sure that brass nut is seated tight to that flange. After that, we will put our guard back on and our water fork. And now with, after we did the advanced touch off for our Z, act, Z offset there, it is a good idea to do a blade touch off then to make sure that that blade is completely accurate. A Couple other things that can affect miters is table level, um, anything like that that would affect the levelness, making sure you have height sensor calibrated, all that because that if it thinks it's a, this, your material is a little thicker than what it is, that will cause your miters to be off. Perfect, thank you, Josh. Thanks for sharing your expert knowledge with us. Hopefully that will help you in your shop and with your miters. Thank you again for joining us.